This topic is going to be looking at how can materials change and there are two main ways that materials can change. One of them is through physical changes which we'll look at in this video and the other way is through chemical changes. And that will come in later videos. So firstly physical changes, these are things that are really common and simple ways of changing a material. And the key with a physical change is that the material stays the same material at the end of the change. So materials can change physically. So what they look like or what they feel like, but they stay the same material in the end. And that's the key. Stay the same material. So here's an example of a physical change with glass. Glass is made up of lots of particles here and it's a lattice compound which we've learnt about before and when you have one big piece of glass it's just one continuous lattice lots and lots of atoms joined together throughout the whole piece of glass but if we come along and smash up that glass and grind it into tiny pieces then we can get left with glass powder here which is really close to sand almost. And what we've done there is we've taken the big lattice that we started with and we've broken it up into small pieces that are still made of atoms and they're still made of the same glass atoms themselves, the same glass molecules. All we've done is broken up the pieces. So let's look at some different types of physical changes. One of the most common types of physical change is when you change the shape of a material. So changing shape. And there's lots of examples here that we can look at. We've got someone in a factory bending sheets of metal into a particular shape. So here all the particles of the metal are arranged in a sheet at the start in a nice straight line but then when we bend the metal we're actually taking the particles and we're moving them in a certain direction. So they're still metal particles, but now they're bent. We can also have another example where you change the shape of something by crushing it. So if you're unfortunate enough to be nearby a car when it gets crushed by a tank like this, you'll see that all the glass and a lot of the plastic will will break into lots of tiny pieces. And this is like the glass example that we had earlier, where all the particles originally are together, but then after being crushed, we're taking them apart. So they're in smaller, smaller bunches than they were. We can also expand and contract different materials. So if you've ever been on a plane and brought a packet of chips or a drink bottle on, you'll notice that they expand when you go up in the air in the plane. And that's because the air pressure is lower and the air inside the chip packet. So there's lots of air particles inside the chip packet 
they all expand and put more pressure on the outside of the chip packet and that makes it take up more space. But on the other hand, sometimes if you push on a material, it will contract instead. And an example you might see is if you've got some shoes with air in the back, like some Nike Airs. When you push down with the force of your heel, when you're running, that pushes on the air particles inside the heel. So here are all the air particles. And then when you push down on the sole of the shoe, those air particles get contracted, which means they get squished and they take up a smaller space. They get pushed together. So that's called contracting. So all of these types of physical change, they're changing the shape of the material, but they're not changing what it is, what it actually is. Some other examples are when we mix materials together. And a common one we've all done before is mixing paints. So here we have, if we look down at the bottom of the paint here, we've got a whole lot of blue paint particles and then a whole lot of red paint particles. And when we mix them together, they still stay as the same type of particles, but they all randomly combine together. And actually dissolving things in a liquid is the same as mixing. So if you ever pour sugar into your coffee or tea, or just some water, all the sugar particles mix together and combine with the water. And another one is called diffusion. And diffusion is how we actually smell things in the air. So if we're standing at one end of the room and somebody sprays this an aerosol can, then the particles of that aerosol can will randomly mix slowly through the air until they reach our nose. So they'll start at the can and then over time they'll randomly mix together with the air particles that were already there. So diffusion is like the spreading of particles. And there's one more main type of physical change and that's changing the state of matter. And we'll look at that in the next video.